Should I get a McSpicy? Now, for those of you who don't know what a McSpicy is, it is, in my opinion, the best burger that McDonald's has to offer. Um, if you're big on your chicken being spicy, according to its website, it's a tender piece of chicken thigh uh, spread across lettuce and a sesame bun. That sounds really delicious, doesn't it? Or at least it does to me. So some of you might be wondering, what am I talking about? Uh, don't worry, I'm not here to sell you fast food, and I definitely don't work for McDonald's. Although after today, uh, they should maybe consider potentially having me as their spokesperson. But should I get a McSpicy? That is the proverbial question that my sister and I always ask each other every time we're on the way to McDonald's for supper. Now, so here's the thing. We're already on our way to McDonald's, usually at about 1 or 2 a.m., and it's already not the healthiest of options. But we always ask ourselves on the way there, should I get a McSpicy? Because it's our favorite burger. And why do we ask this? It's always because we're trying to figure out if we should get the healthier option or if we should get something to make ourselves feel a little less guilty. So like maybe a corn in a cup or like a filet fish But here's the thing. In the toss-up of probabilities, what we're trying to do is to get something not as unhealthy as the 585 calorie McSpicy burger. But in that toss-up, we consider getting something that we don't like as much. It might be the healthier option, but we don't love it. And so at the end of the day, we're always faced with this, I know, somewhat trivial question, but should I get a McSpicy? And at the end of the day, we always get a McSpicy. And the reason is this, because our thought process comes down to this one line. It's go big or go home. <laughs> and every day we decide, every time we have supper, to go big. And so we always give in to the temptation and we always get our McSpicy. Now, at this point, some of you might be genuinely curious as to what is he saying? Like, what is the point of all of this? And it's something I've asked myself while preparing for this speech. I mean, I definitely share the floor today with very prominent speakers. And so I ask myself, why am I here? And the answer is this, it's because I always get my McSpicy. So the McSpicy is a metaphorical representation for what we want, what we want to get in life, what sometimes might not always be the easiest thing to do. Sometimes it might not even always be the healthiest thing to do but we always get our McSpicy. So I'm not gonna lie to you guys, right? I mean, in my introduction, they already told you I'm a student like you guys, right? I'm 23 years old, uh, although sometimes I've been told I look 30, and sometimes I've been told I look 18, I think the cheeks just confuse everybody. <laughs> so I'm 23 years old, I'm still in college, like they said, I'm pursuing a double degree in law and liberal arts. I am a student. But at the same time, I'm also a businessman, I'm also a leader, and I'm also a change maker. So some of you might have known me from the Model UN conference, or for example, the Model UN circuit in Singapore. So I was one of the founding members of the Year and US International Relations and Political Association. Yes, it's a mouthful. We didn't think the name true. <laughs> but in short, it stands for YERPA. And what we've done, is that we've revolutionized the Model UN circuit in Singapore. I served as the Secretary General for the Year and US uh, Model uh, United Nations Conference, uh, the biggest in Southeast Asia. And in our first year, we hosted over 1,000 students, 700 of whom came from outside of Singapore. I'm also one of the first few Singaporeans to be chairing at the Harvard World Model UN next year in Rome. And in the last 15 years, I have chaired, participated, and organized over 30 Model UN conferences. And for those of you who don't know what a Model UN conference is, or a MUN for short, it's an academic simulation of the actual United Nations where students such as yourself and myself take on the roles of diplomats or delegates in arguing different points or presenting what our countries want to achieve in the global arena. And this often involves debating as well as negotiating some very difficult topics such as the immigration crisis in Europe or even the tensions in the South China Sea. And ultimately what we do is to present a resolution or a solution 
to the problem at the end of the conference. In addition to that, I'm actively involved both in my college as well in the larger Singapore community. So in that aspect, everyone here right, can be a student as well as a leader. In addition to that, um, I presently run four businesses while well in school uh, and hold a full-time job. So I am still the head coach at ACS Independent Debate. And on the side, I run four different companies. The first teaches students like yourself, Model UN. The second teaches students uh, in Asia global competencies as well as to help them develop global consciousness. The third deals with debate, which is very much my arena of expertise and my joy. And the fourth deals with teaching students how to excel at university interviews and applications. In all of this, while I attend school in Singapore, all my different businesses operate in Asia, which takes me to countries such as Japan, China, even India, um, South Korea, Malaysia, and Indonesia. My mom once did a survey, and she said that at least once a month, I'm out of the country, and she's really upset because she barely sees me. But finally, I also believe in positive change in society. I believe that it's an important part to give back to the community, especially one that has given back so much to me. Now, I'm about to share with you something that maybe a handful of people in my life only know. And this is it. In 2002, after the 2001 financial crisis, my family actually fell on hard times. Um, we had difficulty meeting the bills. In fact, at one point of time, I was actually on financial aid to be able to pay for my school fees. And uh, thankfully, my family recovered, and we're doing a lot better now. And so sometimes it's even very hard for a lot of my friends, even my close friends, to believe that at some point of time, uh, my family did not do as well. And in fact, would have been considered to have been doing very badly. Now, I recovered on the good graces of the community. There were a lot of bursaries that were extended. There was a lot of help given by the community around me. And so I've always felt the need to give back. And so now with the little education that I have and the skills that I've acquired, I do my best to try to give back to the community as well. So for instance, I actively serve with the Military Justice Project in Singapore, whereby we provide legal assistance as well as advice to national servicemen in Singapore who find themselves in a legal quandary. I also have been recently appointed the Vice President of Migrant Workers Awareness Week in Singapore, where we promote the rights of migrant workers in Singapore, helping the ordinary Singapore citizens understand what their role is in our society and how can we also help them better be a part of the Singapore community. So in all these things, at the end of the day, you ask yourself, how did I get here, right? It doesn't have to be one of those really moving stories. And sometimes I think, you know, it's a little bit cliche always saying the same old things. But when I look back and when I ask myself, using the McSpicy example, how did it all come to be? Now, it's very simple, and there's a saying. Anything in life worth doing is worth overdoing. And I come from a school whose motto is, the best is yet to be. And so I've always carried a combination of these two different words in everything I do, and I take it to everything that I approach in life as well. And that is the, really the message that I have to share with you today. And I'm about to end very soon because like you guys, I'm a student and I always like to keep things short. Or rather, I love it when lectures are short. <laughs> so if you forget everything that I've said here today, remember this. In life, we're always given a lot of choices. There will always be obstacles. And in writing this speech, I was thinking to myself, what if I were in your shoes? What would I want to hear from a speaker now that he's told me all these things he's accomplished? It seems like a little bit like he's showing off. And what's the point of all of that? The point is simple. And many of you here in the audience might be at different stages in your life. Some of you might be really worried about exams. Some of you might be very concerned about where you'll go after high school. What college will you go to? And this is my advice and the one thing that you shouldn't forget. Do not be too concerned about your results. Do not be too concerned about um, how well you do, whether it's in academics or non-academics. But rather, it's just simply this. Remember to be focused on doing your best. That's all that anyone can ask of you. 
And so when you apply that mentality, when you always want to do your best, whether it's in academics or non-academics, because there are so many routes to success nowadays, the ultimate baseline that I have, and that is what I want to impart to you, is something that, ironically, I also learned in the army. It's to excel and overcome the obstacles that you will have in life, and to always pursue the things that you find the most interesting and pursue them to its fullest. At the end of the day, always get your Mac spicy. Thank you.